As a huge fan of historical TV shows, I have found myself watching more and more historical shows from international markets over the past couple of years. In my opinion, I find these international shows to be more simpler and humbler in budget, but they seem to do a much better job of retaining historical accuracy, developing interesting characters, and ensuring the plot is engaging throughout all of the seasons. Therefore, I decided to make this list on my opinion of the top 10 historical TV shows you can watch that are not in the English language, which will introduce you to a new style of production and hopefully some new amazing shows as well. And also, if you love historical TV shows, then do subscribe to my channel, History Spark, as I post videos on historical TV shows and historical movies each week, and press the bell notifications icon as well. So, at number 10, it is Cathedral of the Sea, an 8-part miniseries based on the Spanish historical novel La Catedral del Mar. This TV show follows a farmer named Bernat and his son, Arnaus, who struggle to remove themselves from the clutches of poverty and they seek refuge from the evil feudal lords of their village. This show is divided into two parts. The first is the journey of a poor farmer trying to protect and shelter his son from the horrors of medieval Barcelona. And the second part of the story is of the son Arnau growing up and having a desire to gain wealth and become rich, which causes much jealousy among the noble classes and eventually catches the attention of the Inquisition as well. Cathedral of the Sea is a fascinating show with a strong plot and amazing plot twists especially in the second half of the series. The acting here is serviceable with no one doing a fantastic job but no one putting in a lackluster performance either. And although the show may look a bit lower budget, the strong storyline and interesting characters will make Cathedral of the Sea an amazing watch for any fan of historical TV shows. At number 9 it is Story of Yangtze Palace, a historical Chinese TV series which takes place during the rule of Qianlong's reign, where a palace maid is able to work her way up the ranks so she can secretly start investigating into the real truth behind the death of her older sister. This amazing show is the winner of 29 awards during its run, including winning the award for Best Television Series, Best Lead Actor, and Best Supporting Actor by the Chinese American Film Festival. The story of Yangtze Palace has a great plot which doesn't get old even after 80 episodes. There is a likeable and engaging central character and great costume design and set pieces as well. So from the acting to the storyline, there is very little to not like here. It does get a bit confusing trying to keep track of all the characters that get introduced and removed from the show but aside from the small critique, the story of Yangtze Palace is the perfect show for anyone looking to add a new historical Chinese TV series to their must watch list. So at number 8 we have Norsemen, a Norwegian comedy series about a group of Vikings living in the village of Norheim during the year 790. And this show depicts the day-to-day -day events and struggles of Viking life in a humorous and comedic manner. This show has won the Gold Routine Award in 2017 for Best Comedy Show and The Norseman is definitely a show that will keep you amused and entertained for the duration of each episode. It puts a fresh new spin on Viking culture and the way fans view Viking society in general. The show has a surprisingly engaging and interesting plot brilliant acting by the entire cast and it gives you just the right balance of being funny and nonsensical. So if you're looking for a TV series which will give you a fascinating new way to witness Viking society and medieval history in general, The Norseman is a great recommendation for you. At number 6, it is the most unique and different entry on this list and that's Kingdom, a South Korean drama series which is described as a historical, political, horror thriller. A great mix of genres if I do say so myself. This is Netflix's first original Korean series and it is set in a fictional medieval Joseon era timeline. Kingdom is adapted from the web comic series The Kingdom of the Gods and it explores the story of a crown prince as he sets out to investigate the source of a mysterious plague that begins to ravage his country. This series has amazing acting and original storyline with lots of plot twists and a perfect mix of horror, suspense, fight scenes and political intrigue. Kingdom does a great job of combining a mix of different genres and storylines into one amazing epic overall plot. Some of the characters are a bit bland and one dimensional and I feel like sometimes a bit of the story gets lost in translation with the subtitles. 
But aside from these very minor critiques, Kingdom is a show you need to get on your must watch list as soon as possible. And if you want a show that's totally unique and unlike anything you've ever seen before, then Kingdom is definitely the show for you. At number 5, it is El Cid, a historical TV series based on the life of the Castilian warlord Rodrigo Diaz de Vivar, with the first season covering his young adult years when he is still a low ranking nobleman and only a squire to one of the Castilian princes and with the second season showing his growth to a general of the Castilian forces. The first season only has 5 episodes and the second season only has 6 but each episode moves the plot along at a steady pace and the storyline never seems overly rushed and with careful detail being given to highlight the complex court politics and constant backstabbing present in the Castilian royal court. James Laurent does a fantastic job of playing the primary character of the show, Rui, really bringing the complex character to life, who is not the most skilled, intelligent or strongest of squires but is definitely the most honest, loyal and brave soldiers these Castilian princes can ask for. But aside from James Laurent's amazing acting, a lot of the secondary characters have pretty wooden performances and at times they deliver their lines devoid of any appropriate emotion or expression. But if you're looking for a show that is more about political maneuvering and court politics and less about action and big battles, then Alistair is my recommendation for you. At number 4, it is Barbarians, a Germanic historical TV series which covers the Roman Empire's attempts to occupy Germanica in 9 AD and the rebellion against this conquest by the Germanic tribes led by Arminius. This show does a fantastic job of bringing this little talked about time in world history to the small screen and with the Germans and Romans both speaking their native languages rather than English it gives the show a more authentic feel. This show does a great job bringing the politics and societies of the Germanic tribes to life and it really highlights the tyranny they had to endure which eventually forces them to rebel against the Romans. Barbarians benefits from great costume design, realistic set pieces and an interesting plot that really hooks the viewer in from episode 1. Some of the acting in the show can be weak at times and it does not do a great job of fleshing out the Romans as anything more than just the big baddies of the show. But if you're looking for an authentic and unique experience about German history then The Barbarians by Netflix is my recommendation for you. The third spot on this list goes to Resurrection Etrigul which depicts the rise of Etrigul as the son of a Bey Nakai tribe and to his eventual role in becoming a legendary figure whose actions would help shape the founding of the Ottoman Empire. Etrigul is actually a show recommended to me by viewers of this channel and I have to say I'm grateful that they convinced me to watch this show. It is absolutely amazing. But I do want all my western audiences out there to be prepared to watch a show that is much slower than anything you are used to as there are almost 500 episodes across all seasons so the story is told in a really slow but steady manner which really helps to form strong emotional bonds with all the characters and it helps to give a truly great representation of the day to day struggle these small tribes had to face during this time period. Etrigal is a show with a great cast with every primary and secondary actor and actress bring, doing a splendid job in their roles except for the actress who played Seltuk, I felt she just overacted majority of the time. But aside from this, there is a great storyline with never ending plot twists and obstacles for the main characters to overcome. There is also multiple plot threads that eventually all collide into one big epic story similar to how Game of Thrones should have been. So for a better look at Turkish culture, traditions and history, or just a great historical drama in general, Resurrection Etrigul is one of my top recommendations for you. At number 2 we have Rise of Empires Ottoman, a TV series which shows in great detail the siege and fall of Constantinople by Mehmed the Conqueror. This will be a show which will be of particular interest to historical military fans as the entire show is about the military tactics and strategies needed to successfully maintain a siege against a well fortified city. Emperor Mehmed deals with a number of obstacles and struggles to get past the impregnable defences of Constantinople while also simultaneously having to contend with betrayals, disease and a constrained amount of time to finish the siege before reinforcements can come to the aid of the Byzantine Empire. If you enjoy the more military and warlike elements of historical TV shows then Rise of Empires Ottoman is a great recommendation for you as the show has a magnificent cast, amazing use of commentary by historians 
and a surprisingly accurate level of realism regarding siege tactics and stratagems. So if you're looking for a show that is brutal, entertaining and will keep you on the edge of your seat from beginning to end, then Rise of Empires Ottoman is my recommendation for you. And the top spot on this list goes to My Country A New Age, a South Korean historical drama which takes place at the tail end of the Goryeo dynasty and the beginning of the Joseon dynasty. The story is focused around a set of three friends from different walks of life who have to make great sacrifices to protect their country and the ones that they love. A second storyline focusing on the more historical aspects of the show of Yi Bang Wan trying to get his position legitimized as heir to the Joseon Empire by any means necessary. And he does this by using the primary characters of the show as a catalyst for many real life historical events. This was my first South Korean drama that I have ever seen and I have to say I was absolutely blown away at how good this show was. Each episode is over an hour long but the time just flies by and you are so engrossed in the show that you just keep watching one episode after the other. Being new to Korean TV shows I found the storyline, character development and battle scenes to be totally different from the usual Hollywood historical series I am used to and I think I enjoyed it even more for that reason. One thing I did find a bit off putting though was the amount of wounds and damage characters could take without getting hurt or killed which was a bit ridiculous. In one episode a character would get stabbed through his belly with a sword protruding through his back and he would be up and walking like nothing happened the next episode. This really does affect the realism of the show but aside from this minor critique I feel like my country is one of the best international TV shows that you could watch right now and is available for you to watch on Netflix. So lastly I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video. If, if you did enjoy it please do like and share this video with others and subscribe to my channel History Spark as I post videos on historical TV shows and movies on a regular basis. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.